a few weeks ago, I did a calculation mm -hmm. that showed that there's something I've been wrong about for decades. No. No. No! So, this is Earth as we've been taught to think of it right. from childhood. Right, the color-coded yeah. countries. Yeah. All right. I was talking with a geophysicist colleague, and he was referring to Earth's geode. A geode. Geode. And I said, oh, tell me more. So they care about the geode because they want to know what defines sea level for the oceans. Makes sense. Okay. So what is the geode? The geode is the shape that the ocean takes in response to not only the gravity of the Earth, okay, but the rotation of the Earth. Interesting. So if Earth were just a perfectly smooth sphere with water on it, mm -hmm. the water would be bulgy around the equator and it'd be thinnest At near the, the poles. Right. That, that's outer surface is the geode. Okay. That's surface. That's surface. Now, Earth bulges. We have about five miles wider mm -hmm. across the equator than we are pole to pole. Okay. Not only that, a, a, a slight detail, we are, we are wider just below the equator than at the equator. Mm. Something so, to be proud of, Earth. <laughs> so, <laughs> so, so... Since we're squashed pole to pole, that makes us oblate. Okay. And we're not a perfect sphere. It's a spheroid. It's an oblate spheroid. Okay. And we're slightly wider below the equator, so we're a pear-shaped oblate spheroid. Gotcha. Okay? All right. Pear-shaped. But let's ignore the slightly below the equator part and just say, right on the equator, mm -hmm. there's a centrifugal force that would make you lighter. That than makes if, sense, than yeah. if you were on the poles. It's it's spinning. It's spinning. Right, right. Right. Your tendency to go in a straight line right. will lift you off the earth. Right. You can calculate. I calculated this. Okay. Okay. And you're a svelte 160 pounds. <laughs> Stop. <laughs> Stop. <laughs> that was the funniest thing. All right. Plus or minus. Okay. Plus, right. So you can do it and you end up like four ounces less. Oh. Okay. Modern scales that household scales don't even measure right, right. that, you know, bathroom scales. Yeah, they wouldn't even tell you. They wouldn't even tell you that. But it, we can measure it and we know. All right. So I was spent my whole life saying Santa is the Santa on the North Pole would be the only person who would know his true weight. Right. Because on the equator, you're weighing less than your true weight. Right. True gravitational weight. Okay. There are two things messing with your weight at the equator. Because the Earth is bulged, you are farther away from the center of the Earth. And it's spinning. That's wrong. Uh-oh. Here's the deal. <laughs> it turns out, everywhere on the geode, mm -hmm. you weigh exactly the same. What? If the Earth bulges from spinning, if you bulge at the equator, the poles come in a, a little come bit. down, right. Okay? So now it sounds like I'm closer to the center of the Earth. I should weigh more. However, not the entire Earth is pulling on you. It turns out that while you are closer to the center of the Earth, there's less mass pulling on you. Only, you can do this, you can show this with calculus and Newton's laws of gravity, mm -hmm. that if you are smaller from pole to pole, the only part of Earth attracting you is the sphere that is the cutaway between your feet and the center of the Earth. And that sphere does not include the bulging that comes outside of that sphere. Okay. Those factors combined exactly equal the factors that affect your weight here on the equator because the entire mass of the Earth is pulling, pulling on, on you. you because you're at the center. Okay, because you're at the you're, you're at a wide, widest, uh, widest the point. widest point. Right. Now, what is this? What is the sphere beneath your feet? It's got everything. It's all of it. All of it. It's all of it. 
So these two things, these two, you know, principles, if you want to call them, they cancel out. Yes. Yes, they exactly cancel. The fact that you have the whole earth pulling on you, mm -hmm. yet we're spinning, <laughs> Right. okay? So you have all the mass of the earth, but the spinning, so that makes you weigh more, but then you're spinning, that makes you weigh a little less, plus the earth is a little wider, so that makes you weigh a little less, less. okay? All of that. You put it together. You put it together, it you comes out in the wash compared to your weight, weight on the on pole. pole. Wow. So Santa's fat behind can walk down to the equator and weigh exactly, exactly, exactly the same. Exactly the same thing. Wow. That's he would need the rest of his you can't just weigh his behind. You gotta weigh the rest of him too. I gotta tell you, he's mostly behind. <laughs> <laughs> Check this out. You ready? Okay. If Earth spins faster. Right. This is true. If the Earth spins faster, if it spins once in 90 minutes instead of once in 24 hours. Then the centrifugal forces will be so great that you weigh nothing on the equator. You'll just float. You just float? You just float. Can we have that Earth, please? <laughs> okay, now watch. How do I know that's true? Because the space station, everything orbiting in low Earth, takes 90 minutes to go around. There you go. So if, if Earth's equator takes Good. 90 minutes, it'll be, you're weightless like the space right. station, okay? So, right. However, Earth won't keep its spherical shape. It will become a pancake. We, yes, yes, this is the fun part. Oh my gosh, okay. So so we think of Earth as solid, but it really isn't, Right. okay? There's plasticity in the mantle, right. there's rocks that'll just start floating, okay? So the Earth will start flattening. As it flattens, the equator gets wider and wider and wider, To and you are weightless out there. Well, how about Santa, these guys? Well, if Earth becomes this huge disk, what happens to the North and South Poles? Well, they just become where you put the record pole. Though. Yes, exactly. <laughs> That's the, <laughs> they're just a spindle. They're just a spindle. Right. They're, they're right there yeah. in the middle. Right. And with the right there in the middle, how much mass is between them and the center of the Earth? That, 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 nothing. Nothing? That's it. So therefore, how much do you weigh? You don't weigh anything. And so everybody, everybody still weighs. Everybody still weighs. Uh, yeah. The same. That's pretty wild. It's wild. Except you're floating out there. And you're floating out here, but no matter where you, you are, are on you it, weigh the same. You, you weigh the same, which is right. zero. Right. Because on the poles, there's no mass between you right. and the center of the earth because you are at the center of the earth because you flatten to a pancake. So there you go, flat earthers. This is all you have to do. Speed the earth up to a point <laughs> where we flatten out like a pancake and you will finally get your wish. I was so surprised by the possibility of this that I had to calculate to just to make sure. No, and then I got the results and I, oh my gosh. This is this is a beautiful fact of physics. I'm not gonna go with beautiful. So here's a good question for you. Venus has hardly any spin at all. Oh. It's a planet about the same size as Earth, right. same surface gravity. Has hardly any spin at all. In fact, its day is longer than its year. Whoa. That's how slow it spins. That is wild. You are you are younger in years than you are in days if you're born on Venus. Wow, look at that. Okay. So now ask, what is the flattening of Venus? Just take a guess. What is the flattening of Venus? Yeah. Pole to pole versus across the equator. Take a guess. I'm going to It's say hardly rotating. It's, it's, then there's no flattening. There's at no all. flattening at all. Go look it up. Right. Look it up. No it's the flat. same here as it, it is, is there. Wow. Yeah. Yeah. So so the oceans have a geoid, but the solid Earth has a geoid as well. And we're not rotating all that fast relative to like Jupiter and, and Saturn. Saturn rotates once in like 10 hours. And it's huge. That's Something that big rotating that fast? That's fast. Yeah, that's fast. <clears throat> so we're only about, like I said, about five miles thick uh, at the equator. But that's enough for this effect to matter. That's wow. all. I'm, that's so cool. And so, that's yet another explainer from Star Talk. As always, keep looking up.